Born and raised in the idyllic low country, author Stacey Willingham's dark and scandalous first novel is already headed to Hollywood, and we have her here in studio. Yeah. It's so good to have you. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much for having me. So let's catch up the audience for a second because yes. this is your first novel. It is. It's a New York Times bestseller. It is. <laughs> and HBO's decided to pick it up as a series. Yes. Okay, my head's already spinning. <laughs> you must be living in some parallel universe right now. Yeah, it feels like that sometimes. Wow, so how surreal is this experience for you? Uh, it's incredible. I, you know, writing a book is, uh, it takes a long time and it's a pretty solitary experience. So for the longest time, I was just working on writing it and trying to get it done and then trying to get an agent. And I, I tell people that it happens very slowly until all of a sudden it happens really quick. And yeah. that's exactly how it felt with the flicker in the dark. So. Um, so yeah, I finished it back in January of 2020, mm -hmm. got my agent in February of 2020, got my book deal in June of 2020, and then it was published in uh, January 11th of 2022. That's so incredible. lots of lead up. That, yeah. Yes, it really is, <laughs> isn't it? Did you always know that you wanted to be a writer? Was that? Pretty that, much, yeah. Okay. I mean, I've loved writing and reading my entire life. Um, I went to Wando High School. I was on the Tribal Tribune newspaper, which is really what solidified my love of writing and journalism. Um, so I went to UGA, majored magazine journalism, and kind of decided then I wanted to work at a magazine or a newspaper. Um, but immediately after graduating college, I just realized I loved creative writing and fiction writing a little bit more. So I made that pivot when I was about 21 and um, tried to, was kind of dabbling in fi fiction and tried to see if I could. You also went to SCAD, is that right? I did, yes. Yeah. I got my MFA uh, at SCAD and the Atlanta campus. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So tell us about this story. It's chilling yeah. <laughs> yeah it is chilling and i'm curious why you were drawn to that subject matter yes so a flicker in the dark tells the story of chloe davis she's a psychologist in baton rouge with a troubling past when she was 12 years old she uncovered a piece of evidence that convicted her father as a serial killer in their small louisiana town That's so a story <laughs> right and so 20 years later um she's gotten her life back on track she's engaged to be married um, but on the eve of the anniversary of her father's killings girls start to go missing again oh. so i have always I always loved mysteries and thrillers. I kind of grew up watching um, Columbo and Alfred Hitchcock with my parents, and that kind of um, morphed into an interest in true crime. Mm -hmm. So um, that paired with some criminal psychology classes I took in college got me pretty interested in serial killers yeah. and the psychology behind behind them. And um, one day I just had a, a realization that if I had a hard time understanding a serial killer, I couldn't imagine how their families must feel. Oh, wow. So I wanted to tell the story of a serial killer through the eyes of his daughter, mm -hmm. um, someone who would have been deceived by him in such an intimate way and someone who you know, is supposed to feel safe and protected in the company of her father. Um, and then when she realized he wasn't who she thought he was, uh, her world just kind of comes crashing down. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Why did you decide to choose Louisiana and Baton Rouge in particular as your background? Yes, so I, growing up in Charleston, I love writing about the South. It's such a unique place and the sounds and, and uh, sensations around us are so unique and visceral. So I knew I wanted to set it in the South, but for some reason, Charleston didn't feel quite right for this story. And I wanted a small Southern town with an everybody knows everybody kind of feel. So I was looking at a lot of different little towns towns around the South, and I came across Bro Bridge in Louisiana, and it felt kind of perfect because it's the crawfish capital of the world, which felt like a really cool detail that I could really latch onto and describe. And um, they have this annual crawfish festival every year that is very cool. So I was looking through these pictures of this crawfish festival, and I just saw this chapter in my mind of Chloe and her family at this festival and the swamp pop and the crawfish being uh, prepared in all these different ways. And it just felt very Southern and unique. So I picked Bro Bridge for that reason. And then uh, Baton Rouge was sort of a logistical decision. I needed her in the present day storyline, you know, a couple hours away within driving distance, yeah. things like that. It's got a lot of character to it. Yes. So yeah. it's just another layer of character. The the place in which this takes exactly. place is its own character. Exactly. Right? The setting is, is very much a character in and of itself. Yeah. Um, I love writing about about setting and place. So, so let's fast forward to today. Yeah. Now the story is headed to Hollywood. So tell us more about this. Whatever sure. you can tell yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, sure. So it was uh, optioned, uh, gosh, 18 months ago now. So by uh, Emma Stone and A24, they got their hands on a Word doc of it back in 2020 wow. and read it before it was published and um, thankfully loved it enough to mm -hmm. option it. So 
Uh, yeah, Emma Stone and A24 as the production partners, and then they found uh, HBO Max as a streaming partner. So they are currently working on it. I've met the screenwriter, um, a woman named Morgan Gold, who's really wonderful. And um, those are the, the biggest details I have at this yeah. time. But uh, those are big enough. Yeah. yeah. I mean, those are big enough. <laughs> it's amazing, though, that you are first out of the gate. I mean, you just you knocked it out of the park. <laughs> Thank you. So that must be a little bit of pressure when you're in the process of yeah. the second book, which you have completed. Yes. So the second book is written. It's in copy editing right now um, in cover design. So I can't make any more changes to it, which yeah. is kind of the hardest part. I always want to tinker with stuff. But at this point, uh, the tinkering is done. <laughs> can, can you give us a little hint as to what that story is about? Yes. Yes. It's, um, it's another psychological thriller. It's set in the South again, but this time in um, Savannah and Beaufort, so a little bit closer to home. Yeah. And it takes place um, another kind of past and present intertwining storyline. So in that way, it's similar to A Flicker in the Dark, but uh, totally different plot, yeah. totally different characters, and it'll be out in January of 2023. Fantastic. Congratulations. Thank From the you. Bayou to the Sea Islands. Yes, exactly. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, congratulations again. <laughs> Thank you. Can't wait to dig into this. We're back after this.